Welcome to DIYEasyCrafts.com. How to make a do-it-yourself knife with the sponge micarta scales. Now this particular knife is kind of unique also uh, because it has a full blade etching. This etching was done prior to heat treating so that all of the uh, deeper areas of the etch are nice and dark. The sponge micarta uh, was created with a purple sponge and um, I mixed a little black paint in with fiberglass resin and ended up with this beautiful effect. Now the design of this little Skinner uh, actually started um, and it's made on a, or the, the blanks are made on a water jet. A company called Long Island Water Jet out in Bohemia, uh, Long Island, New York, uh, cut these blanks out for me. I have them in stock. Uh, they're available from DIYEasyCrafts.com. They're all made out of 1095 high carbon steel, uh, 3 16 thick, so it's a nice meaty, uh, thick little blade. And they're great for, um, for quick knife projects. Uh, there's not a lot of grinding to do because it's a small blade. Um, I'm not going to go over the whole etching process. I've done this several times. But the pattern for this particular blade was cut out on a, a Silhouette Cameo vinyl cutting machine. I then adhered that vinyl uh, to the blade before I heat treated it. And I did, I did a very deep etching. Um, I left it. I left the electro etching in place for a long time, you know, a minute or so on each spot, so that it would be very deep and that the etching would survive the heat treating and tempering, or the cleanup after the heat treating and tempering. So we're going to start by heat treating this knife. The etching is already done. I'm going to heat treat it just really with a, with a torch and then uh, dumping it in some oil. And then I'm going to clean it up with some. Um, Fine grit and emery, emery paper. I, I think this is about a 400 or so. Just like you would polish any knife after heat treating. And all I'm doing here is I'm just kind of polishing the higher uh, edges of the design, of the pattern design on the blade. I had done uh, the bevel uh, grinding prior to heat treating, the rough bevel grinding. And then uh, afterwards I'm going to go back and just polish that up um, and do a little bit more on the belt sander as far as the final um, the final bevels as well as just tweaking the outside um, shape of the blade. Now remember any um, grinding or polishing or sanding that you do uh, after the heat treating you really want to uh, control the temperature on that blade. Don't let it get too hot. Uh, if you notice I, I constantly quench it in oil. I've got a, a bucket of, I'm sorry, quench it in water. I've got a five gallon bucket of water right next to the uh, belt sander. And as soon as I'm done with the, the shape of the blade and, that, and the final bevels, I'm going to move over onto that um, sponge micarta, which is really what I wanted to experiment with here. I wanted uh, to experiment not only with the, um, the texture of the blade and the etching uh, before heat treating, you know, that, that dark look, uh, but I really wanted to experiment with, with making micarta out of this, these kitchen sponges, which I found down at the local supermarket. Um, my, my bright idea. Um, it actually ended up working out, but it was not as easy uh, as I thought it was going to be. I mixed up a little bit of fiberglass resin, and I put a few drops of black paint, uh, oil-based uh, paint, in with that resin, mixed it all up. And then I, my first attempt was just to make the sponge micarta just like I would any micarta. Um, I actually put some black construction paper uh, into my micarta press first, completely saturated that sponge, put the sponge on top of the black um, construction paper, so that that construction paper is going to end up being um, the liner of the knife. And then I wrap this all up uh, in wax paper, put it into uh, the micarta press, and I, I put the top on. and. Uh, in, a, in a few minutes I clamped it all together but in hindsight all I really did by pressing this was I pressed all of the fiberglass resin out of the sponge so that when I took this sponge out of the press um, and I cut it in half uh, the paper micarta at the very bottom was was great nice and hard 
uh, but the sponge was still soft. Uh, all of the fiberglass resin had been had been squeezed out of it. The second attempt, um, and this was 100% my, my, my mistake, um, I tried to salvage that original uh, sponge. I thought that I could just add additional fiberglass resin. Um, I made a little container out of duct tape uh, the actual size of the sponge so I wouldn't be wasting that resin and then I just worked uh, worked that resin into the sponge as much as I possibly could and then I set that aside to dry without pressing it. At the same time I took two small pieces of the sponge. I actually cut it out of another sponge. Um, I actually made it a little bit thinner basically the the correct size for the scales and I completely saturated that in the fiberglass resin and then just laid it out on uh, the, that same piece of wax paper. I really didn't anticipate that working very well, but in the end result, it was those two small pieces that I ended up using. Uh, the second attempt at salvaging that piece of sponge micarta, again, some of the edges were nice and hard, the top and bottom were nice and hard, but when I cut into it, there was still some soft, uh, some soft areas. So in, in hindsight, what I would do next time is I would mix some fiberglass resin, completely saturate the sponge, and then put it in a container so that the resin was actually, um, you know, fully covered the sponge, uh, top to bottom. I am going to proceed with those two small pieces of sponge by car. And I'm going to start by just um, using a belt sander and making a flat, nice flat surface on the back. Um, these two small pieces of sponge weren't quite as thick as I would like them to be, so I am going to add some uh, black construction paper and laminate them on uh, as liners. And I just wanted a nice flat surface in order to do that. I'm also going to uh, just mark the basic shape of the handle. I'm going to make these a little bit oversized. You know, I like to grind the final. Um, I like to grind right down to the full tang uh, after the scales have been mounted. But I will do some rough cutting. Uh, you can do it on a bandsaw. Um, I'm going to use a pin saw. And again, I have no idea what this is going to come out like. I've never made sponge micarta before. Um, you know, I don't know if I mix too much black paint or if it's going to all become black. But, you know, as I'm working with this, I am starting to see some of the purple kind of shine through on the edges, etc. A little bit more, a uh, little bit more sanding on the 4-inch uh, belt sander. And here, you, if you look closely, you can start to see some of the purple and black uh, areas. Um, and what I did before I went any further, I just wanted to polish up one of these scales just to see kind of what the finished product was going to look like. And if you look close, you can really see the purple and the black and just a very nice intricate effect. So having seen that, I'm going to continue. Um, th this is where I'm going to add the liners. Uh, I've got some black construction paper laid out over on the left hand side. I think I want three or four sh small um, sheets. I laminated them all together with the same fiberglass resin, put some fiberglass resin on uh, the back surface of each scale, laid those scales on top of that black construction paper, and then I also put some resin on top of the scales. And I did that because there are still some little open uh, holes uh, through that sponge, and I just wanted to fill them in a little bit with resin. Um, this does not have to be perfect. It, you know, it's kind of cool to have those, those holes. Um, you know, on the scales. I'm then going to fold over uh, that wax paper and I'm just going to hold it in, hold those scales in position against that construction paper just with a weight. And, and I'm just using the top of my micarta press, but you could use any, any board, any lead weight you wanted. I'm then going to move on to the bolsters. Um, for this particular knife, I'm going to use brass bolsters. Um, I've just cut these out of some uh, small scraps of brass that I had laying around the garage. I'm going to use my um, my belt sander to do some of the rough grinding. I'm not taking these down to the actual size of the knife. I'm not going to form fit these yet, but I'm going to get them close. I'm using a disc grinder for that inside curve. And then after it's close enough, um, 
and that forward curve is 100% done. I am going to uh, attach these to the blade. I use a two-part epoxy, and then I use, um, on this particular knife, I use one-eighth diameter uh, brass pins. And I clamp those all together in the vise and also with a clamp. I, I set that aside, usually overnight. This one I, I think I only left for uh, about four or five hours. And then I took it out of the vise. I cut off the excess uh, pins just with a bandsaw. And just make sure you angle this bandsaw away uh, so that you're not cutting into the bolsters you know, with the band. Um, you're going to end up with a little bit of a dimple of that uh, brass pin and you can polish these off right on the belt sander. All right, so now the bolsters are glued uh, and pinned in position on the blade. They still haven't, haven't done the, the final grinding on those bolsters to bring them down you know, to the top edge of the tang. And I'm gonna move over onto uh, gluing and attaching those sponge by Carter scales onto the blade. I, again, a two-part epoxy. These scales now have the liners uh, already glued or resined onto them. And I'm just using a, uh, a pair of pliers, needle nose pliers, to, to turn those pins into position. And then I'm gonna put this in this entire assembly uh, back into the vise and clamp those scales nice and firmly uh, onto that tang with the vise as well as some clamps. And if you notice, I, I did use some painter's tape on the blade. You certainly don't want to get any of that two-part epoxy on the etched uh, portion of the blade. It would be really kind of difficult uh, to clean it off. I'm going to get rid of uh, or cut off the excess pins. And kind of the same process that you did on the bolsters, I'm going to then go to a, a belt sander and polish those pins um, right down flush with the scales. And I'm going to also use that belt sander to, to now finish grinding the scales as well as the brass bolsters right down flush with the top of the tang and in fact the whole outline of the handle of the knife. And this is kind of the fun part because you're beginning to see what the end product is going to look like. Um, starting to see how those uh, sponge by Carter scales are going to look. What the finished product is going to look like rather. Um, I'm going to go back uh, to the 2x72 belt sander and do some finished polishing, uh, finished sanding along the uh, both sides of the scales as well as the bolsters. And at this point I changed uh, from the Navy grit uh, down to a 120 grit on the belt sander. Now just to smooth out all of those rough edges, make it more comfortable in your hand, I like to use a little Dremel grinder. Uh, it really is one of my favorite little tools uh, in the shop. I just use a drum sanding wheel and round over all of the edges and then I just keep fitting it into my hand to see where, when it feels good in my hand. And you, you look at it to make sure that both, both sides are kind of uniform. Now aside from uh, sharpening, final sharpening, and, and of course making a sheath. This knife is basically done except for polishing. So I just went over to a polishing wheel, uh, polished up the bolsters, as well as uh, that sponge micarta. And again, I didn't know what to expect with this um, sponge micarta. You know, had never done it before. Uh, but I was really happy with the finished product. You know, I like the purple and the black combination. Uh, in the future, I will try it with a couple of different colors. Um, you know, maybe not using a purple sponge, but there are other colors available. Um, but overall, you know, I wasn't real happy with how many times it took me to get it right, uh, but I was very happy with the final product. Now, please check us out on the web at DIYEasyCrafts.com. Be sure to check out our other how-to videos. And if you like this video, I ask that you please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel.